Hello and welcome to Four Corners. In September, the ABC was plunged into chaos. Our managing director, Michelle Guthrie, was sacked, ordered out of the building only two and a half years into her term. It was a shock decision that drew an immediate response from ABC staff, including the executive producer of Four Corners, who tweeted her support of the move. In the days that followed, the focus shifted to the chairman, Justin Milne. He was accused of running political interference in the ABC and resigned. In this era of fake news and loss of faith in governments across the world, the independence of institutions that represent the public interest is of critical importance. So what are you, the public who fund us, supposed to make of what's been going on? In the weeks since the crisis, there's been plenty of speculation about what happened here behind closed doors at the National Broadcaster. Tonight, we tell you the inside story and hear in detail from the two central characters, Michelle Guthrie and Justin Milne. Partners at first, but opponents at the bitter end. Sting and then into Andy. It is Monday, the 24th of September, and it's great to have your company. Hello and welcome to RN Breakfast. Fran Kelly with you. Monday morning at the ABC's Sydney headquarters. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic... It's a slow news day. Elsewhere, immigration is in the news, but the Daily Telegraph... We'll cross to Canberra shortly from some analysis. The broadcaster's boss, Michelle Guthrie, arrives early. I was in the office at the usual time on a Monday morning, which is about 7.30 or so. I was going through, you know, what I needed to do for the day. Corporation's chairman, Justin Milne, is also on his way in early. But there's nothing routine about his plans for the day. Sacking people is not anything that anybody enjoys. I've done it on very, very few occasions uh, in my life. Five to nine, I guess. Justin walked into my office with Jane Connors and two other members of, of ABC staff and closed the door and handed me a letter to let me know that I was terminated from the ABC with immediate effect. Um, it's still clearly causing you distress. Yeah, it was shocking. It was shocking. Um, she was um, um, uh, upset, not wildly upset, but of course she was upset because she'd just been terminated. So it was, it, I mean, really, it was pretty predictable. My first response was, "There's, I have a management meeting, uh, you know, first thing at, at nine o'clock." He said, "Well, we've, we've, you know, um, changed that," and I was told that I should leave as soon as I could. I said. I want to go home and tell my parents. I haven't told my parents, I haven't told my siblings. Uh, and I just tried to get out of there as quickly as I could so that I could get home to tell my parents before they, you know, saw it on TV. Justin Milne, welcome. Thank Is you. it fair enough to say that Michelle Guthrie has been sacked? Uh, well, her, the her problem in the end uh, that has been the board had with Michelle was not her personality or her niceness, it was her leadership. Did you? anticipate how she would fight back? I anticipated it as a possibility, um, that's for sure. Um, and the board anticipated it as a possibility and despite that possibility, we still felt that, the, that it was just our obligation. And in the end, it became clear that it's what we had to do. The fight back was swift and surgical. The ABC chairman is resisting growing calls for his resignation. He's raised questions about government interference at the ABC. ABC staff hold stop work meetings. Extracts from a dossier were leaked to Fairfax, appearing to show the chairman had demanded the sacking of two journalists 
who defended the government. Hands off ABC! Hands off ABC! Hands off ABC! We had an unprecedented story this morning which, if true, casts a real cloud over the future of the ABC, and that is that our chairman, Justin Milne, appears to have interfered politically with the future of staff member Emma Alberici. That narrative took off and it became a firestorm. The chairman of the board has a responsibility. The union became involved and clearly that became a very serious situation. The board um, let me know that they wanted to meet without me, uh, they did, and then they asked me to step aside and I agreed immediately to, to resign. Hi, I'm Georgie Somerset. Hi, I'm Peter Lewis. Hi, I'm Kirsten Ferguson. Hi, I'm Vanessa Guthrie. The ABC's board members refused to be interviewed by Four Corners. Since they knew the contents of the dossier before Guthrie was sacked, the question for them is why they failed to act until the information became public. I knew the whole story. They were there from beginning to end uh, and the whole story of the Arborici affair. So why didn't they stand behind you when it was leaked? Out of context, you'll have as to you say. You'll have to ask them, Sarah, I'm afraid. Was that the wrong decision? You'll have to ask them about that as well. In the space of three brutal days in September, the chairman and Miss Guthrie were both gone from the ABC. The public, which owns the ABC, had no idea why it had happened. Michelle was employed to lead the ABC and it was abundantly clear that she was not leading the ABC. As I keep saying, up until today, I still don't know why I was fired from the ABC. This must be the strangest assignment I've ever had, investigating the killing season inside my own workplace, with serious questions about political interference, leadership failures and corporate governance. It's your ABC, as we like to say, and mine too. And as you'll see, it's as vulnerable to crisis as the federal government. The old spirit is taken, and uh, the new spirit for the ABC. But we are travelling by the old, the Asian spirit to celebrate this new beginning. It started so well for the ABC's first female boss. Guthrie was a former Google executive who'd worked for Rupert Murdoch for more than 10 years. But now she was taking over a public broadcaster where ancient spirits offered little protection against government antagonism. How would you brief anybody on the situation that developed with the ABC? It's been like in the bunker for the last four or five years and every few months there's another, you know, blast of howitzers come from Canberra. It was absolutely the role of, of the managing director and the chair and the board to protect the ABC from, from political interference. Good morning. Good morning. That issue would become critical at the end. On day one, Guthrie, somewhat shakily, expressed her vision for transforming the broadcaster. Ms Guthrie, congratulations and welcome. This is a notoriously challenging position. Why were you keen to take it on? Well, for, for a start, the ABC is, is you know, the, an extraordinary platform and, and an, an, an absolutely critical organisation, you know, in, in terms of Australian culture. And for me, it's coming home. I think the, the key thing is really sort of, you know, what audiences really desire and, and how that is really changing so rapidly with digital transformation. Mm. Uh, do you believe the... A fundamental criteria for the job was somebody that could manage the digital transformation, the digital revolution that's eating up media wherever we look. And Michelle Guthrie appeared to be highly qualified. The whole board endorsed her appointment and all of them, including myself, have to wear the odium if she turned out to be no good. 15 seconds. 
Guthrie moved fast on her transformation of the ABC with full support of the board. Restructuring the broadcaster and shedding 200 staff, a string of senior executives left. Remember, this is an 86-year-old institution. The idea of change in the culture of the organisation in a matter of months, let alone, let alone years, is, is, is fanciful. Michelle did start well, and I think the staff were prepared to give her a fair degree of latitude too. But you've got to remember these were really tough times for anybody. The ABC has lost, what, a thousand staff or more over the last several years. It's had its budget cut by about a fifth, and it's had an increasingly hostile government. There were other things, like the interminable Google speak and the sort of chaotic reorganisation within the ABC that, that I and many staff didn't enjoy and found uh, were quite confusing. On April the 1st, 2017, Justin Milne was appointed as chairman of the ABC, replacing former New South Wales Chief Justice Jim Spiegelman. Yeah, that sounds fine. My first contact was, I think, through Mitch Fifield, who said, would I like to put my hat into the ring? And I was immediately delighted at the idea. So I said, yes, I'd love to, so, so I did. It's always a political appointment in the sense that it's, you know, that, that, that role is, is appointed by the government of the day. A former Telstra executive, Milne was immediately labelled in the media a friend of the Prime Minister. Their business connections went all the way back to the 1990s and to Aussie Mail, the company which made Malcolm Turnbull his first fortune. Malcolm is like a professional friend of mine, mm. really. I've known Malcolm for a long time. I certainly think that it's useful to understand the people that you're dealing with. So knowing Malcolm was, I think, useful, and also um, knowing Minister Fifield, who I knew from um, NBN. There was a view at the time that he was very close to Malcolm Turnbull. Was that obvious to you early on at all? No, I mean, you know, as I said, we, we talked a lot about, about uh, you know, the challenges at the ABC. We talked a lot about, about the transformation and, and where we got to. I really inherited Michelle's a strategy, um, which seemed on the face of it to be um, a perfectly OK strategy. But I did discern that there was some um, concern about it, especially from old timers. And part of my thinking was to try to discern how much of that was reasonable and how much of it was just people who didn't like change. And what conclusion did you come to? It's one thing to be a change agent, but that doesn't just give you a licence to waltz in and say, I'm going to change everything. You really have to bring people with you on the change, and that, I think, was a big issue. And is that something that you think the managing director failed to do? I, I think, in the end, I have to say yes. After Milne's arrival, Guthrie noticed an immediate change on the political front. Again, some context is probably relevant here. I mean, certainly when Jim Spiegelman was, was chair of the ABC, you know, we, uh, Mitch Fifield and I had regular conversations by phone. I mean, uh, you know, um, he, he would call me if, if there was an issue. Um, and, uh, you know, once, once Justin um, really started as chair, those calls stopped. So they had their man. Well, uh, that's what I suspected. Hi. Hi. Triple J's hottest 100. Anytime outside Jan 26. That's the day for the time. Doing... Today, Triple J wants to hear from you. There's a survey on our website. The shift in the political climate began in late 2017 with a sudden heat wave emanating from Triple J Radio over plans to move its Australia Day special, The Hottest 100, to a new date. The Triple J staff had done an amazing job around consultation and done a lot of work. They had polled 60,000 of their listeners and so they made a recommendation to the leadership team. The leadership team spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about the implications. I mean, remember, the ABC was a key broadcaster of, of all the Australia Day events. Justin Milne got involved, pre-empting the government's displeasure. He shared his views with the board. Michelle and I worry, he said, that the ABC will be seen to be front-running the debate. 
my strong impression is that we would part company with Parliament on this issue. He had said to me, I'm pretty sure that Canberra will go nuts, the government will go nuts. I don't remember him mentioning Malcolm by name, but, but he did say that, you know, this, this, is, this is a crazy decision. Did you say that Malcolm would go ballistic over the decision to move the Hottest 100? I don't remember saying that, but, um, but I may have. Why should it matter whether Malcolm Turnbull goes ballistic or not? It doesn't really matter whether Malcolm Turnbull goes ballistic, but, but I think what you're driving at here is um, why does it matter what the government thinks? And it does matter what the government thinks. The ABC uh, should be absolutely independent in that the government should not be able to tell the ABC do this or do that. Um, the government should not be able to ring the chair, give him an instruction and he delivers the instruction. And, and that never happened. If you're saying that Malcolm Turnbull never gave you a direction, but you were essentially running his line, you were preempting what he would think. If you say Malcolm's going to go ballistic, you think it matters what he thinks about that decision. I think it matters what government thinks. The government, whether it's a Liberal government or a Labor government that's in power, is our shareholder, um, they're our, our banker, um, they're our regulator, um, they're our occasional inquisitor. It's just naive to think that the board cannot pay attention to that because at the end of the day, one of the jobs of any board of any organisation is to ensure its continued existence, and that means funding. <laughs> When the majority of the board decided to back Triple J's request, Milne accepted their view. But the government wasn't finished. Mitch Fifield wrote to the ABC board, asking them to reverse the decision. It is difficult to see Triple J's decision as other than a repudiation of the clear majority view of Australians that our national day should be marked on the 26th of January. The board and Milne stood firm. Triple J's Hottest 100 has a new home. The fourth weekend of January. Woo! And it's going to be the hottest weekend of the year. Triple J! I really hoped that Milne had learned his lesson, basically, that he understood that this is a slippery slope. I mean, it is not a new phenomenon for governments to try to intervene in the ABC. It's the job of the board and the chairman to resist that pressure and not transmit it to the staff. The following year, the pressure escalated. I certainly can't remember a time of more intense scrutiny and interaction between us and Canberra. We have introduced and... In February, the government was in tough negotiations with a hostile Senate to pass its corporate tax cut. Mr Speaker, the Labor Party wants to increase tax. The government wants to reduce them. Good evening. Welcome. The ABC's chief economics correspondent published two articles critical of the policy. I saw the stories that Emma Alberici had posted. I immediately had a couple of concerns just to avail myself of the facts around whether we were rock solid on the, on the editorial process behind them. The chairman weighed in with news director Gavin Morris and Michelle Guthrie. I'm wondering about this article. I'm not sure this report is balanced. What do you guys think? Pretty rapidly, Qantas and the Business Council of Australia fired in uh, complaints. There was, um, there was a bit of a sense of uh, alarm and outrage because there were errors in the, in the piece. We had direct communication during the course of that day and the next couple of days from, you know, the Treasurer's office, the Minister's office, the Prime Minister's office, business groups. Was this story in particular a particularly intense one? Yes. Because members opposite either don't understand the difference or they're now calling for businesses to be taxed on... Through the day, the government ramped up its attack on the articles. And we saw that they were busily retweeting the article, uh, one of the most confused and poorly researched articles I've seen on this topic on the ABC's website. When Malcolm Turnbull took to the floor of Parliament House and made his feelings well known, that was the way I found out their opinion. The ABC has the same understanding. Did you talk to Malcolm Turnbull directly about that article? No, I didn't, no. Did you receive calls from anybody in government? No, absolutely not. By evening, the Prime Minister, the Treasurer and the Minister for Communications had sent formal complaints to the ABC. We're dealing with a news article that was very valid, that had some 
factual kind of inaccuracies in it, and you had a analysis article that I think, and on reflection, the, the advice showed, strayed a little too closely to opinion. Did you consider at that moment that the article and the complaint could put the ABC's funding at risk? Look, to be truthful, I didn't have the budget so much in mind, but, but it's certainly true that the, the articles have had the potential to affect us. Please welcome Justin Milne. Milne's primary concern was getting extra funding for a massive digital infrastructure project called ABC 2.0 or Jetstream. When the day finally arrives and linear platforms are switched off for good, Australians can be assured of reliable access to high quality public broadcasting. I believed that the ABC could get the government to provide a large amount of money, notionally about $500 million, to spend up front on building new digital equipment, new digital infrastructure for the ABC, which would be effectively paid back over a 10-year period. An email to Michelle Guthrie from a senior ABC executive indicates strong management support for the project. Michelle, to loop you in, in live time, great meeting with Justin today. Justin, thank you again for your time. As usual, we are all wonderfully aligned. Working title is ABC 2.0. Key to the success of investing in audiences is Jetstream. The Jetstream strategy was a well-endorsed and well-understood strategy from the entire board. Did Michelle Guthrie support your work on Jetstream? I think she did. Um, I think she, I, I really do think she did, and I, I have to think that because it was dealt with so often uh, in the board. Michelle supported that all the way through, so I think she was a supporter of, of Jetstream. Milne told the board the Alberici complaints could jeopardise funding. He said, we're planning to ask the government for extra money for ABC 2.0. Our chances of getting extra money, or perhaps even maintaining current funding, may have been significantly diminished by this issue. There was this real sense that, that we needed to, to please the government um, and that, that uh, the government had expressed um, you know, as, as we know, a number of complaints around, around uh, Emma's reporting and that we needed to placate the government. And he put it in those terms a number of times, really, really said that, that we have a problem with Emma. Was he putting you under pressure? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This, of course, goes to the heart of the allegations against you that eventually led to your resignation from the board. The overall picture is that you led the charge for a journalist to be sacked. Is that how it happened? No, I led the charge for us to make sure that our um, journalism was accurate and impartial. Early in the piece, um, the idea of providing uh, Emma with a warning or moving her or moving her out uh, were all discussed by management, not by me. Um, and the fact that they were discussing that was, was presented to me. At that time, the idea of Emma leaving the ABC, of Emma Alberici leaving the ABC, effectively, of her being sacked, originated in management, not Correct. the board. Correct. From management, not the board. It was discussed and it wasn't decided upon. It was one of a number of different possibilities of, of you know, how should we handle this problem. That includes Gavin Morris? Well, he's one of the managers, yeah. That's not true. It's certainly not true around the company tax story. It was never an issue... Uh, in my mind, that that was an appropriate course to take in relation to Emma's role. You said in relation to the tax story, did it become a, a question over other stories? Um, I won't say whether, you know, uh, whether it did. What about Michelle Guthrie? Was she part of those conversations? Yes, um, yes, she was, of course, yeah. Was there discussion amongst management about sacking Emma Alberici? In February? In February. No. Or in, in the immediate weeks afterwards? I couldn't put a date on it. No. Did Michelle Guthrie take part in conversations discussing Emma Alberici's potential sacking? Absolutely. The Alberici imbroglio could have ended there, but it didn't. Hello, I'm Emma Alberici. In early May, on the eve of the federal budget, 
Alberici filed a story critical of the Prime Minister's signature innovation policy. A national culture of innovation. The response came quickly. A lengthy complaint from the Minister for Communications, Mitch Fifield. Michelle Guthrie was on tour in Western Australia with board member Vanessa Guthrie. She alerted Milne immediately. The point I was really trying to make in, in you know, forwarding the email was that, that you know, complaints from the government about, about a, uh, you know, a, a, a story about innovation, again, where, where we subsequently found that there was, there was one small error, just seemed to be completely over, overkill. The minister's complaint set off a chain of emails between them. FYI, Guthrie wrote, I assume minister's office may leak this today. I was going to ask you about Emma's status. Should have asked sooner, it seems. On the face of it, this doesn't look great. Mitch is out to use anything to discredit us, partic Emma. So you thought Mitch Fifield would use anything well, to discredit the ABC? Well, um, you you did have a scenario where you had six complaints from from the minister in in five months. Mm. I mean, I think that was unprecedented in in any in in any term. Two of those complaints were about Emma Alberici. The exchange continued. I said, "Where's the effect of really?" What are we doing about Emma? I th and I said, I thought that we were looking at external career development opportunities, was the stupid term that I used um, for Emma. And um, Michelle came back and said, we are, but this interference from Mitch um, is not uh, helpful. That email exchange goes on. Milne says, I thought you were going to be discussing external development opportunities with her. You responded, we are but this missive from Mitch isn't helpful. What did you mean by we are? Well, again, it was, it was having a conversation with her about, about her career. Mm. Um, and he was having a conversation, and, and these conversations were run by, by you know, Gavin and, and her, her um, you know, her news team. What did you mean by external development opportunities, yeah, career development a, opportunities? That's a, sort of a, a silly corporate euphemism for um, uh, firing him. Justin Mill says that that phrase, external development opportunities, is his corporate speak that you would understand to mean firing. No. No. To be clear, that it was external development opportunities, which is external to the ABC. He's not talking about a conversation around her being moved inside the ABC. He's talking about external, to which you agree. Yes. So there, yes. there was a question that Emma might be moved out of the ABC. Well, there was a question where, where Emma might choose to, to mm. leave the ABC. And what about if she didn't choose? Was that part of the conversation as well? No, it wasn't. It, it, there was never a conversation about, about firing Emma. Guthrie had received HR and legal advice about Emma Alberici. Their view was there were no grounds to sack her. Whatever Michelle was seeking to do in getting advice or whatever else, all I can contribute is what my point of view was at that point in time, and my point of view was there's no question around Emma's employment status. I think she just was not making a decision, which might have been some of my uh, frustration, which caused me to write the now infamous uh, email, because we seemed to be mucking around with this for a long time. So I was after a decision of some description or another, not to just be in, in no man's land. For those watching the budget coverage, the fate of the ABC was a minor line item. Andrew Proben, Laura Tingle, Barry Cassidy. But for the organisation, the government's funding freeze of $84 million was another hammer blow. Over three years. As the coverage continued, so did the email conversation. By now, Milne was relaxing at home. This was like maybe eight or nine o'clock at night and I'd come home and had a couple of glasses of red. You went on to say they frickin' hate her, she keeps sticking it to them with a clear bias against them, we clear her as OK, we are tarred with her brush. How did you come to know the extent of the government's hatred? 
by reading the newspapers. Um, I think that the extent of the of the government's dissatisfaction with the ABC was um, apparent to anybody who read the newspapers. But in that case, you are being particular. You're saying they frickin' hate her, not the ABC, her. Well, that she was the subject um, de jour. Um, and the subject of that conversation because it was Emma again who'd got into trouble. But again, I, I just stick on that they freaking hate her. It's a very stark statement. It suggests you know they hate her. Well, I think I think everybody understood that that um, the government was, as a, for the reasons I just said, they they had multiple um, methods of showing their dissatisfaction with the ABC and they used them all. Let's go to the next line because that's the one that caused so much trouble in the end and, and very particular personal trouble for you. I just think it's simple, get rid of her. My view is we need to save the corporation, not Emma. There is no guarantee they'll lose the next election. How can it be read as anything other than a direction to sack her? I did say, in my view, meaning, and I think that that's important because, as I've tried to say to you, Sarah, is that I think it's important for chairs to express views. That wasn't a direction, though. I was not saying, I hereby command that um, you sack Arborici. Really what I'm saying is, come on, let's, let's do something here. Let's resolve this. We can't go on making mistakes because it will affect our, our budget. So get rid of her. That was one option, um, that's, that's for sure. Do you think Michelle Guthrie understood perfectly what you meant? Oh, I think she understood perfectly what I meant. I think she understood perfectly well that uh, firing Emma Alberich was an idea that first came from her. It looks like you're involved in conversations about Emma moving on from the ABC, yes. is that right? I was having conversations with... Um, actually, there were conversations, as said, happening within, within um, you know, the news team mm. with Emma about, about her future role at the, at the ABC and whether, whether she would prefer not to, to be at the ABC. You would agree that uh, understanding the context of that now very important email that caused immense turmoil in the ABC is important? Well, it's important in raking over what did or didn't happen mm. between Michelle and Justin. What's very important to me is that Emma's still doing her job. But the question that you may have considered removing her at some point is also pertinent. Well, again, I'm not commenting on per pertinent questions that Michelle and Justin, in hindsight, looking back at a very ugly set of events, think are relevant. Why didn't you take that email to the board? <sighs> um, look, I... <laughs> I do um, think that, that, you know, at, at the time, um, my view very strongly was that, that I needed to work this out with Justin. Um, and, and I had had, as I said, conversations with Kirsten Ferguson, conversations with, with um, Vanessa Guthrie mm. and, frankly, I, I, you know, conversations with, with other members of the board around, around you know, Justin's interference. Mm. Um, and, and their perspective, you know, was, was definitely supportive of me but, but not coming up with solutions either. Are you saying you raised the issue of political interference that was being put on you by Justin Milne and the board did not respond sufficiently or in detail or actively? No, they did not. Guthrie chose to stay on in Western Australia despite the crisis at the ABC over the budget cut. From a corridor in Bunbury, she delivered a message to staff. Hi. Thank you for taking the time and joining me to today. It's referred to by some executives as the hostage video. I want to talk to you about the budget decision announced by the government last night. This decision means we'll have to find uh, 84 million less over that three year period. Money we have to find elsewhere to minimise the impact on content and services. Thank you again for your time and, and I look forward to continuing this conversation with you. Thank you. Do you think that Michelle Guthrie failed in her relationships with the government and that in some way contributed to that cut? That's a, that's a big charge. Um, I'm not sure that I'm really prepared to say that. I think that her engagement with Canberra, by that I mean both sides of the House, was poor. And that was something that eventually the board came to understand and I came to understand because people in Canberra um, told me that they'd like to see a lot more of her. Things that happened at the ABC backstage. 
I was at Q&A every Monday, certainly where I could, and there were a lot of, of senior politicians who were on Q&A. Mm. And you could spend quite a bit of time with, with them and their advisers mm. beforehand and afterwards, you know, getting to know them. <laughs> Was there a leadership vacuum in relation to the ABC and the government? I think there was. I, I think that it's necessary to <clears throat> walk the halls. Yep. Yep. A rift emerged between the managing director and the chairman over how to handle the antagonistic government. You knew there were jobs at stake? Absolutely. Guthrie wrote in a text message, going to have to take 200 people out, mostly from news. Milne urged Guthrie not to attack the government. Looks like a Swifty from our buddy, he said. Game is only just beginning. I reckon we put this behind us and stick to our current plan. It's the big prize we want, not the little one. Milne wanted to protect his pitch for Jetstream funding. I wasn't allowed to essentially, you know, fight the government on the indexation cuts because we needed the bigger prize. I was getting these texts from Justin saying, you know, don't criticise the government, big prize, you know, get the, wait for the big prize rather than the small prize. I was expressing, you know, frustration about that and, and, and Vanessa's advice was very much, you have to work this out with him. Better we don't go to war, Milne said by text, over these relatively small cuts. I'm working very hard in the background, but we need to stop poking the bear if I'm to have a chance of getting it to dance to our tune. Guthrie replied, we can't sell Jetstream to our teams in the face of these cuts. Frankly, if, if I didn't think that, that this government was going to um, provide $500 million for the ABC for, for modernisation, then after the, the indexation freeze, it became absolutely certain to me that that wasn't going to happen. On June the 15th, Milne went to dance with the bear. He met the Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, and the Communications Minister, Mitch Fifield, to sell the Jetstream project. The backdrop to the meeting was another claim from the government of inaccurate reporting, this time about the ABC's chief political correspondent, Andrew Proben. I remember him texting me to say, you know, can, can I call you mm. at, at four o'clock for, a, for a, you know, to debrief you about the, the meeting with, with Mitch and Malcolm. And he called at four o'clock and he just started yelling at me. I mean, he denies that he berated you. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was, it was terrible. And it takes a lot for me to cry, mm. um, but I got very, very close. And I was shaking. I mean, I, I, I wanted to get him off the phone. He, he accused me of... At, at one point, I think, I, I you know, said to him, this government isn't going to give us half a billion dollars. And he said... He, he then yelled at me and said, are you, are you accusing me of being a liar? I said, no, of course not. According to Guthrie, they had a heated exchange about Proben. Was he representing to you a view that had been expressed by the Prime Minister that you should sack Andrew Proben? No, he didn't. He didn't say Put that. Put it in those terms. He didn't. He didn't say that. But but he was very clear. He he absolutely said you have to shoot him. Well, I certainly don't recall saying it. I don't think I did say it. Um, the the conversation that Michelle is referring to was uh, I I categorically. Um, deny that I berated her. I didn't yell at her. I didn't um, swear at her. Um, but we had a, what you might call an elevated conversation. We had a disagreement. And Michelle gives as good as she gets, sort of thing. But did but the Prime Minister at any time communicate to you his dissatisfaction or anger with Proben? No, not that I can... Not, not in the sense that he rang up and said, you know, I hate Proben, you've got to get rid of him or anything else. Is it possible that what happened here is that your relationship with Michelle Guthrie broke down irrevocably, separate to her performance? No, I don't believe so. Um, the, the relationship... I maintained a professional relationship with Michelle all the way through. What broke down, I think, was her relationship with the ABC. The disruption caused by Guthrie's restructure was being felt through the organisation. The most recent annual staff survey revealed deep unhappiness with Guthrie 
and her leadership team. Toxic atmosphere of insecurity, it said. The MD is missing in action. Be open about vision, beyond spin and good looking graphical one pages. Thinly veiled contempt for anyone that has worked here longer than five years. Morale was the lowest that I've ever known it, and I've worked in the place on and off for, you know, three or four decades. How much of that you can blame on any one thing, I'm not sure, but, but you know, the place is punch drunk. Why were you losing the staff? Well, so, so there was a lot going on. Um, there was uncertainty, I get, I get that. Mm. Um, you know, it was, it was a time of, of uncertainty and, and turmoil. In April, consultants came to the ABC to do an evaluation of Michelle Guthrie, called a 360. Members of her executive team were asked to rate her on a variety of fronts, leadership integrity, interpersonal intelligence, and collaboration among them. On all of these, she scored badly. How do you explain receiving those scores, 3% for integrity, I think, low scores for interpersonal intelligence and so on, collaboration very low? How do you explain getting those scores from your own team? So, so look, um, again, this is a personal development tool. Yes. Um, and, and the key thing for, for me was, was what's my action plan to... to um, to, to deal with that, um, and how do I work with the leadership team to make sure that that you know we work we work together more effectively? Were you distressed by how they'd scored you? No, no. Why I mean, not? You could understand that you would be if you get very low scores on significant but, components again, of your personality it's a, it's and a, it's character. A, it's a moment in time, mm -hmm. and and but it's a real thing. It's a real thing, mm. but it's a moment in time. It showed that um, there were some very um, alarming scores on a number of different criteria um, that the board and um, the chair of the remuneration committee simply had to pay attention to. Those are very low scores coming from your immediate reports. And, and, in, and including the, the, the board. board. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I was, I was specifically told that, that, you know, Justin had given me high scores around that, mm. which is, is quite ironic. For the interests of, of accuracy, um, the, the board also was part of that survey, um, so they provided their input as well, including me, and interestingly, I was her highest scorer. I don't think you would rely on a 360 profile to do anything other than to be a guide for somebody to look honestly at that assessment and say, okay, wh which areas can I improve? If people read it any more literally than that, mm. I think that's a mistake. When you saw those scores that Michelle Guthrie had received from her immediate colleagues, did you talk to them about what was going wrong? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I, uh, yes, I did. I, t I spoke to them. No one ever asked me what my opinion was. You're one of the most important executives in the organisation. Um, if they didn't ask you, were they doing their job properly? I don't know if they were doing their job properly, but that question is one I've reflected on. I tried to be uh, subtle uh, about it, but I did speak to um, a, a person who had recently left the corporation, so I sort of conducted a casual, if you like, um, exit interview with that person. The things that worried me about that conversation were that um, this person described uh, an unpredictable leader, a leader where you didn't know which Michelle um, you were going to get. Was it the nice Michelle or was it the cross Michelle? The 360 includes a comment section about Guthrie. Asked to identify her strengths, the sentiments are much more positive. Michelle has admirable drive and tenacity, empowers her leadership team, brilliant systems thinker and strategic leader, strong driver of change. Nonetheless, Milne said he had to act. The first meeting we had with Michelle about the 360, um, strangely, her scores were not um, discussed and that the discussion in that first meeting was about the culture of the ABC of which she was very critical. There was a, a, a debrief with me and, and Kirsten and, and Justin mm -hmm. around the, the 360 and I remember Kirsten saying these are bad results and mm. I said 
Kirsten, you know as an HR professional that this is a development tool. There's no mm. good or bad. They're, they're you know, uh, it, it's, it, that's not what this is about. Uh, and I, I also remember that, that, you know, Justin thought that it was bullshit. That the 360 model was bullshit? Yes. She said something like, look, I'm 52, I am what I am, I'm not changing, that's, this is what you get. Um, and her view was that she was a change agent um, and that the dissatisfaction that was shown in, um, in this survey and the dissatisfaction, the, the lack of engagement in the engagement scores was all because um, the ABC was resistant to change. It's been said that you say I'm 52 or 51, oh, I'm, I'm not going to change. Gosh. You know, this is it, I'm not going to change. Gosh, I mean, I think that's true of my personality, but that's not true of the way in which I, I operate as, as a leader. A pivotal board meeting took place in early August, three months after the 360. We did have a difficult board meeting in, in Brisbane. Board members had just discovered that the ABC was more than $70 million over budget. The board was also dissatisfied with Guthrie's strategy to remedy her leadership. That was a difficult board meeting for everybody that was concerned, and she was uncomplimentary about the board after that, but then the board actually at that meeting had some problems uh, with her as well. They decided to up the ante. On August the 22nd, Milne summoned Guthrie to a meeting at his city office. With him was board member Donnie Walford, a Liberal government political pick from South Australia and an executive coach. Milne read from a prepared script. Michelle, the reason we've asked you to meet with us today is that we need to inform you that the board has deep concerns about your position as MD and to inform you that your performance cannot continue in its present form. I was trying to make it abundantly and undeniably clear um, that her job was on the line. The board um, all had input uh, into that script and we took some advice from a previous Fair Work Commissioner to provide input into the script as well. The short script highlighted Guthrie's personal leadership style and referred to instability amongst her executives and a lack of engagement. What does engagement mean? Well, it means showing up. And the showing up part and being around and being available for people and being seen to be available uh, is really important. Clearly, your job was on the line at that point. No, no, no. You, you didn't see it that way? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, it was, it was um, a shocking conversation mm. uh, because it was not based on fact. Uh, it was very impressionistic. It mm. wasn't based on specifics. Mm -hmm. um, when I asked, well, who in the leadership team is unstable, there was, there was no response. Uh, one of the key things I, I asked was, do you have any problem with my strategy, with my transformation, mm. with what I've done? And they said, we, we, we have no problem with what, we have a problem with the how. And I... I, I I, you know, for a start, I, I wanted the feedback, um, but this was the first time I'd had feedback from them. Did you think it was still salvageable at that point? There was the possibility of salvaging it. I think it would have required a great deal of humility. It would have required um, a genuine desire to recognise the gaps in her leadership and to change them. And were you prepared to change? Of course, of course. Guthrie agreed to prepare a plan to address substantial changes to her leadership style. Donnie Warford was acting as the managing director's executive coach. Guthrie texted her the next day. The board has no idea about the private awful conversations Justin has been having with me, as well as his interference with management. In a follow-up phone call, Guthrie went further in her complaints about her dealings with Milner's chair. Then she made a single shocking allegation. At a board dinner in Sydney's Potts Point in November 2017, Guthrie says Milne touched her inappropriately. To be clear, you were talking about inappropriate physical contact. Yes. 
What does that mean? Is that an allegation of sexual harassment or something? No, I, I really am not getting mm. into it. Um, it was it was inappropriate behaviour and but physical, phys inappropriate touching mm. is is the best description of it. It was I felt icky. No, mm. it was it was it was inappropriate. It was it was unprofessional and inappropriate. Well, she outlined a number of allegations, and and you're going to have to forgive me for not um, going into them chapter and verse, except to say that I, I never ever behaved in any inappropriate way um, with Michelle. I, I have no reason to whatsoever, um, and I didn't. Let's just find a way to talk about it. One of the suggestions is that you rubbed her back at a board dinner at Billy Kwong's. Did you do that? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I think she meant that to have a sexual innuendo about it, which I can't possibly for the life of me understand um, why she would say that. Um, you know, I, I've had no physical relationship with Michelle uh, at all. Um, and I, I never, ever acted inappropriately with, with Michelle or indeed with any other woman in the workforce or any other woman at all. <laughs> what effect did it have on your relationship with him? Look, it, it didn't have an effect on my professional relationship with him, you know, but it was certainly in my mind that in, in social settings, I made sure that I didn't put myself into, you know, or tried to avoid putting myself in, into situations where, where that might recur. Why didn't you insist that the board investigate it, clear it up? Because I wanted to get on with the job. Um, you know, I... I I, I, I was focused on, on the task at hand. I mm. was, there, was, there was a lot to do. When Milne learnt about the allegation, he says he responded immediately. Donnie told me. I immediately called a board meeting. I asked Donnie to tell the board exactly what she told me, and the board felt, and I completely agreed, that the best thing to do was to meet with her and. Um, you know, make, if you like, a preliminary investigation of the of the allegations, but to try to deal with them. And the best way to deal with them would have been to have her make a, a complaint to formalise her her uh, her um, issues. But she declined to do that. Board member Joe Gersh, a Melbourne lawyer, was deputised to speak to Guthrie. Gersh and Guthrie met for breakfast in a cafe near the ABC. Their accounts of the meeting differ. The purpose of that meeting became very clear, that he was trying to force me to resign. It was very, very clear that it wasn't to take forward those, those allegations, which was the poor, poor ordered, you know, conversation, but it was about saying, you know, you, you, know, you clearly can't work with the chair, so, so you need to go. Are you suggesting that Joe Gersh discouraged a formal investigation by the board? It, it was very clear that he said, you know, he, he said to me, the, the, you know, Justin denies it, you have to work, you should work it out with him. And I said, that's absurd. I mean, it was absurd. The board offered this statement about the meeting. Mr Gersh did not go to the meeting to elicit Miss Guthrie's resignation. After being advised that the board had lost confidence in her ability to lead the organisation, Ms Guthrie made allegations regarding Mr Milne's conduct toward her. The board determined that Mr Gersh would meet with Ms Guthrie to give her an opportunity to formalise her allegations and make a complaint, which would be dealt with by the board. Ms Guthrie declined to formalise her allegations or make a complaint. As far as you knew, once Michelle Guthrie had met with Joe Gersh and declined to take it further, it was settled? Yes. And Joe Gersh made that clear to you and the board? Abundantly clear. Now, in this era of the Me Too movement, you know precisely how much power, what potent power an allegation like that has. Once it's been said, it cannot be unsaid. Do you regret introducing it no. into the picture? No, it was, it was unacceptable. Communication between Guthrie and Milne had broken down. Well, I certainly wish it hadn't come to the violent ending that it did. There became an inexorability to it in that we just sort of kept on heading down this path and Michelle showed no signs of, of uh, deviating uh, from it. So but is that because you got locked into an idea rather than her? You had fixed your minds and you were headed there? Yeah, no, that's a, that, that's a good question and, uh, you know, I believe the answer is no.
my sense was very much that that. Um, you know, on, on reflection, that, that the former chair wanted somebody, you know, in this job that they could control, that he could control. And I wasn't, I wasn't that person. I wasn't, I wasn't a pushover. As requested, Guthrie presented her proposal to address the board's concerns and a plan for the next two and a half years. I responded in great detail on the 29th of August with a 10, 11 page document, you know, very much um, expressing my, my, you know, absolute commitment to, to the organisation and, and a commitment to change. Two weeks passed without a response. Milne told the Minister for Communications they were removing the managing director. On the 13th of September, the chairman, with board member Vanessa Guthrie, went to the ABC to deliver the news. I never got a response to the, the 29th of, mm. of August detailed letter. No feedback? No. Other than hand, being handed a deed of release with a letter of resignation and a draft press statement saying that I, I you know, had to leave for urgent, leave the ABC for urgent personal and family reasons. That was precisely what we wanted for her, was to have an exit, an exit that would be dignified for her and not damaging um, for the ABC. Didn't work out, did it? Did not work out. I never understood the urgency. I really, I, I still can't explain the, the urgency. Um, I never understood why this had to be immediate. I never understood why this couldn't be worked out. In the course of negotiations, Michelle Guthrie's lawyer questioned whether the reason for her sacking was that she'd made allegations of inappropriate behaviour against Milne. Were you shocked to see them resurface at this time? Not shocked. I'm disappointed, um, but, but not surprised. Do you see it as a tactic? It didn't work. If it was a tactic, it didn't work. You told Joe Gersh that you didn't want the inappropriate behaviour to be investigated. Why did you bring it back and put it on the table at the 11th hour? That, that's, it's not the case that I, that I um, brought it on the table at the 11th hour. Certainly in the, in the conversations I had with representatives of the board, mm. one of the things that I had said very clearly was we should treat that, mm -hmm. that separately. Um, and, and they were grateful for, for me treating that separately. The board hurriedly produced an informal list of reasons for the sacking, including failure to act as editor-in-chief and lack of support for Jetstream. In response, Guthrie prepared her dossier with a detailed rebuttal, including Milne's now infamous they frickin' hate her email. She sent it at 5 p.m. on Friday. In the final paragraph, she wrote, if the board resolves to terminate my appointment, the reasons appear to me to be in part because of my disclosure about the chair's inappropriate conduct towards me and interference in the independence of the ABC. As the chairman, why not slow down the process at that time, stop and consider properly her response to you? because the dossier, the so-called dossier, was nothing new. It was only a sort of a cut and paste, really, of material that we'd already had um, from her. There was no, nothing new in the, in the dossier at all. The board met to vote one last time. Milne abstained. Six board members voted to sack Michelle Guthrie immediately. Kirsten Ferguson, did not. She opposed Guthrie's sacking. She wanted a negotiated exit for her that also minimised the risk to the corporation. Would any other board do this? That, that if you looked at the board of, a, of a, any public company, is this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen and this is the ABC. How do, how do you explain the urgency? I think she's tougher than people think, as has been exhibited since they tried to, to get rid of her. Um, you know, she's already 
launched her counter-attack and, and the chairman is gone and now I suspect she's gunning for the board. Michelle Guthrie is now suing the ABC and Justin Milne. In a recent communication to Four Corners, Guthrie pointed out that one possible outcome is reinstatement and return to the ABC. An investigator appointed by the ABC board is currently examining some of the issues you've seen in tonight's program. And a Senate inquiry is about to begin into the broader issue of political interference in the ABC. Tonight is our last show for the year. You can watch any of our stories from our searing expose of the aged care industry to our white knuckle story of the Thai cave rescues. They're all there on our website. For now, we're hard at work on our investigations for next year. Till then, good night. <laughs>